guys, what is going on? Welcome back. Uh, another week, another case, again from Rachel this time. Uh, this I'm is... monopolizing. Exactly. She's got too many interesting cases. I don't <laughs> know. Uh, but with that, let's start. Rachel, what do we have today? You know, more abdominal pain, because when you work in general surgery, everybody just has abdominal pain. Fair enough. Um, we have a 26-year-old male. He has no past medical history. He's compla- He's complaining of progressive abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting for the past day. He says he woke up in the morning with this dull abdominal pain. He thought like, he's been constipated recently. He thought maybe it was from that. But about two hours after having his eggs for breakfast, he had like a severe bout of nausea yep. and an episode of emesis. Okay. He was surprised but couldn't remember whether it was the eggs that came up or if it was yellow or green or red or anything. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely not red that he would remember. Uh, throughout the rest of the day, he started developing an aversion to food. Wasn't really all that hungry. And ended up having three episodes of emesis in totality. He came to the ER because he was continuously nauseous. The abdominal pain started to get much worse and he just kept vomiting. Okay. You know? So when he was here in the ER, well, when he was here in the ER. He, Wait, time out. Where, yeah. where is this abdominal pain exactly? Diffuse. It, it's not located. So we have a diffuse abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What does that sound like to you? With the 26-year-old, it sounds like it's going to be appendicitis, but if it's <laughs> vague, I don't, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Appendicitis starts with that vague pain and then yeah. kind of translates, like, kind of. But, yeah, so we went down to see him. He was nauseous despite getting four milligrams of Zofran, and he continued to have emesis. He had two large volume bilious emes- mm-hmm. episodes of emesis um, in the ER. But before we get there, you know, just want to take a look at him and his vitals. He was tachycardic. Up to the one teens, he was normal tensive. Most patients don't that we see aren't um, rigoring in pain. Mm-hmm. This man was begging not to be touched. Most people say, "Oh no, please don't press; it hurts." But this sweating like looked right, like he was right. in pain. You know, um, his abdomen was distended and just diffusely tender, softly distended but just diffusely tender. Okay. So immediately we we dropped an NG tube. Okay. And came back with a huge amount of bile. I'm going to say, like, maybe filled up an entire canister right away. Interesting. This points more towards obstruction type of uh, situation. And what about the special signs? So as burnies. So we will generally, if we're thinking it's appendicitis, we'll do a McBurney's first. Mm. But in general practice, to sit there and do an operator so as, it's not really done. Okay. Um, but no, he didn't have a positive Murphy's, he didn't have a positive McBurney's. Or okay. Just very diffusely tender elevation all Okay, over. so pretty vague signs so far. Yeah. Um, okay, so what did you do next? In our general surgery fashion, we put him in the CT scanner. Yep. Always in thing. So, you know, at this point we're thinking, he seems to be obstructed. Mm-hmm. You know, he's throwing up bile, he's distended, but this kid has no medical history. He has no surgical history. So normally we would be like, oh, it's adhesions from your appendectomy when you were 12. Sure. You know? But... You don't know the source of his No, like where is this obstruction coming right. from? You know, talk to him a little bit about his social life, and he... Sedentary. He doesn't really go to the gym. He's, you know, college, right. class and home, class and home kind of thing. So we're thinking he chooses to be from hernia. Also very slim. I mean, no, he has no congenital. What about like IBD? IBD patients tend to have obstruction. Yeah, so that's a that's a good point. So if you have a stricture from Crohn's, definitely. But which was also on our list because he was constipated at a point. Right. Um, and yeah, you're right. In the twenties is usually when IBD rears its ugly head. So we put him in the seat. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a GI or anything, so we throw him in the scanner. See, let's see what's going on. Sure. Which was really interesting, and we have an image of it, but, um, well, not his particular, right. but yeah. an image. Um, and it showed this abnormal, multi-layered, target-like um, image with a diameter that's larger than the small bell. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know what that means. it doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Um, luckily, our radiology friends. What's the interpretation? Friends, <laughs> luckily, our radiology friends will tell us what that means. Yeah. 
Um, those findings are consistent with an interception. Okay. Strange for an adult, right? Yeah. Um, with those CT findings, and he just kept clinically getting worse, we took him to the OR for a diagnostic laparoscopy, and the treatment for mm-hmm. an interception is just cut and take. Right. You know? So he had to go to the OR anyway. He didn't have a hernia. There was no hernia or anything, so where did, where did this interception come from? So we took him, and inter- interoperatively, they found a Meckel's diverticulum causing the interception. Whoa. Wait, Meckel's diverticulum. If throw you back to Pete's. <laughs> so, with Meckel's diverticulum, isn't it more commonly in patients under 2? Yeah. And this guy's 26. asymptomatic. So, not only is this guy 26, but he had complications and symptoms of diver- or Meckel's diverticulum mm. causing the obstruction. How often does this happen? How often do we see it, or how often does Meckel's get complicated? Does Meckel's get complicated? 2 to 4% of people that have Meckel's diverticulum end up having complications. complications. Yeah. Okay, and does it usually happen in their 20s, or? Anytime in life. Anytime in life, okay. Um, most patients before the age of two, but you can have it at any time. Okay. So but why don't was, you... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It was really cool. You know, um, I mean, I've definitely never seen it. Yeah. So, to finish this case itself, they did a small bowel resection with a primary anastomosis. You know, the patient did well, had return of bowel function, was tolerating a diet, and went home. Um... The only caveat is we keep we keep him on a low residue diet, just kind of protect the anastomoses, make sure he doesn't blow it open with a hard bowel movement, hard right. stools. Um, that's it. Other than that, he's doing well. As far as I know, he's doing great. Cool. Can we? Uh, well, I have one question before we start talking about Meckles. Yeah. For the imaging, you went straight ahead with CT scan. If you're if you're thinking it's obstruction, why not go with the plain film? We could have gotten a plain film. It would have shown us. Just air fluid levels or an alias. Mm-hmm. But, and you're right, most of the times we do get the flat film and then go from there. But we had no idea why this guy was obstructing. Gotcha. So basically to get the source of the, you knew it was obstruction. Yeah. Getting an x-ray would tell you nothing. But it would just confirm knew. what you knew. Which, so, as would a CT. Right. But the point of CT is to find the source of the obstruction. Yeah. So this could have gone one of two ways. You're right, we could have gotten a flat film, saw the air fluid levels, saw that he was obstructed, right. had him worsen, take him emergently to the OR, found this interception, took it out, and diagnosed him right. with Meckles. Or we could have put him in the CT scanner, seen this interception, then taken him to the OR. Neither way is right, neither way is wrong. Sure. Um, I think the, the textbook answer, and what a lot of people actually do do, is just get a flat film first. Okay. Um... We already had a CT available to us. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, talk to us about Meckles. Cool, right? Yeah. Um, Meckles is actually the most common congenital anomaly of the GI tract. But it's also quite rare. I remember there is a rule of twos with um, Meckles. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, so it's kind of just sums up Meckles' diverticulum. Yeah. Um, especially since it's so rare that you rarely see it unless you're working in peds or right. something like that. Um, it happens most likely under the age of two. There's a male to female ratio of a two to one. Right. So it's more common in men. You can find the diverticulum within two feet of the ileocecal valve. Mm-hmm. It's about two inches in length, but again, that varies. Mm-hmm. Most commonly within two inches of length. And about two to four percent of people develop a complication from it. Cool. And this guy is one of them. Yeah, he and his family could not... When we first told him, we were like, oh my god, he had a Meckles diverticulum, that was awesome. All right. And his family looked at us like, You're okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. But once they looked it up, he felt like a celebrity. Right. Um, okay, 26-year-old so, so. male, big abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, um, had bilious vomiting, down to have obstruction caused by Meckles diverticulum. Yeah. He had a, what procedure did he have? Small bowel resection. Small bowel resection. With the primary anastomosis. Connected that bit back together. Gotcha. And then he went home with no complications, living normally. Yeah. I 
like that case. It was cool. Yeah, I've never, you know, Mechalos, you only hear about it in school and like that one question on pants. <laughs> if you're lucky <laughs> enough to get that version of the exam. Exactly. Um, but it's cool to see it in real life. Yeah. Awesome. I hope you guys like that too. Uh, you know, very rare case, but here it is. So, uh, you know, again, guys, if you guys like this, obviously like it, comment, see, let us know how you would uh, change this course of action. Uh, if you've ever seen Knuckles before, and as always, subscribe. All right, guys. Bye. See ya.